Hello, everybody. It's what? Excuse me. I, I'm doing a fucking show here. What? Go, go ahead. What do you want? You write that bio? What bio? Jesse Joyce said it to me one time. Yeah. All right. <laughs> it's Brooke. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch. It's Brooklyn. And <laughs> it's Brooklyn in the 1960s. A young man who is dedicated to karate travels to Japan to continue his training. His name was Tommy Patera, and he would become one of the greatest karate fighters <laughs> that South Brooklyn had ever seen. <laughs> Welcome to the sit down. Everybody was coming. Thanks for being here, everybody. Welcome to another episode of our show. I'm Mike Racine. With me is Matt Anderson. Hey, everybody. And my good buddy, Andy Haynes. Hey, what's up, everybody? My, hey, friend, and my, new, my friend and my new roommate. <laughs> Andy and I go way back. <laughs> Actually, I got to say, if it wasn't for Andy, I'd probably be like dead under a bridge right now. Why? What, what, did, you, what did Andy do he for taught you? taught me how to move furniture, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay. And actually, so what happened was, I mean, just to give you a little, like, a little uh, background, right? So I didn't have a job. This is like 2009. Andy taught me how to move, and then Andy moved to L.A., and then I became, like, the king of New York City moving. Yeah. <laughs> sure. The king, yeah. the king of Brooklyn junk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then you taught that skill to other folks, right? You taught that to, like, Chris and... I paid... Yeah, yeah, I trained I trained all those guys. I trained Chris and Joel. Right. Yeah, they yeah, studied yeah. under you? They studied under me, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, it's a good way to make a living, you know? Yeah. Yeah, never did I think I'd be back in the moving world. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> when I was on the you Warner Brothers great? lot. You know what's great, though? You can always come back to it. Yeah, I kind of always... like, that's <laughs> kind of what I moved back to New York for was because I know how to make new, like I know how to make money just yeah on the streets. Here. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And in LA, I just didn't know how to do anything that wasn't comedy. Yeah, it's not really like a hustle town, is it? I mean, it's like a hustle town, but it's like you have to be like in the conversation to hustle. You can't just yeah, be yeah. like a guy who's like in the periphery and be like, hey, uh, yeah, Mr. Hulu, I got an idea for you, <laughs> right, Mr. Right, right. Yeah. You're like shining his shoes and you're yeah. like, how about a story about a girl <laughs> who is uh, frustrated with life and her improv classes aren't going well? <laughs> wow, I heard the greatest idea today. How about a divorced woman in her 40s who rediscovers her sexual identity? <laughs> that's, how they, that's how they made that show casual or whatever it was. This is Tommy yeah. Patera pitching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, it's crazy. I mean, he's been incarcerated, but he's woke. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's been watching episodes of Transparent. <laughs> he's got an Amazon Prime membership in there. Well, so this is kind of an interesting story because, you know, we were saying last episode that a lot of these guys, like, it, it becomes kind of repetitive. Yeah. Uh, but this is like, I mean, there's some more um, There's some more depth here to this yeah, guy. Yeah, this I guy think. has a lot of uh, highlights and, uh, you know, just the things that he's good at, it's pretty great. I mean, karate, high-pitched voice. And he's like, he had a, a like a high falsetto. They said yeah, higher. They said than he sounded like Mickey Mouse. <laughs> it's a bummer that we didn't get any audio of him. Because right. It'd be nice yeah. to hear what his voice sounded like, so we could make fun of him. <laughs> well, you can make fun of him, Andy. I have respect for people. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to get killed. Are they allowed to listen to podcasts in prison? Um, I, don't I don't know if they're allowed the internet because they would. Most prisoners would just email their victims' families. <laughs> 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 no. And be like, hey, just so you know, I'm still in here. Let me think about how much I liked killing your daughter. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, God. Right. They would start like a YouTube channel or something. Well, Tommy, uh, Tommy's born in 1950 in Gravesend, Brooklyn, and his parents struggled to make ends meet. Uh, his mother uh, worked, his father worked as a candy salesman, <laughs> which is an interesting, interesting job. Interesting hustle. How much it's candy did people used to buy that you could be like, yeah, I'm going to... I'm going to sell candy to <laughs> Yeah. Well, I guess he sold to stores and stuff like that. Oh, he's like a distributor. Oh, right. <laughs> Which, I mean, that's got to be a fucking tough job. You go into stores, they already sell candy. He's like, excuse me. I don't think whoever buys you candy. Have you guys heard of Violet Crumbles? <laughs> yeah. Let me tell you. You have to be like a real sleazebag about everything, Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. Look at the way that this nugget, it breaks. I got a new piece for you that's the future. It's They're called Necco Wafers. <laughs> They're disgusting. <laughs> uh, but yeah. um, wholesale. Maybe though. that's why he got Probably. into the drug trade. 
Yeah, probably. Because he saw his dad moving that sugar. And he was like, you know what else is white? <laughs> <laughs> right. Cocaine. White and powdery. Um, but I don't know. I, I thought his up his upbringing was like so sad. His dad sold candy and he got bullied all the time. He was small. He was frail. He had a high pitched voice. They, they, they said he got beaten like every day. Oh, oh his yeah. parents? Bomber. At no, Booty at Junior school. High. At school. Oh. Yeah, at Booty Junior High. <laughs> Booty. B- yeah, remember? You remember that? B-O-D-Y. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, uh, we, we also didn't talk about how Gravesend is called Gravesend because that's where the mob buried bodies. Uh, there's a cemetery there. Oh, okay. Yeah. But that's where like L&B Spumoni Gardens is. That's where like all the, uh, you know. Look at you. Has it what? Knowing all about New York. Well, it hasn't been like, we went there one time. Their sauce is very oregano heavy. Everyone's always like, oh, L&B is the best pizza, but. Yeah. I wasn't. It was okay. I don't like oregano though. I really don't. Is that by Sheep's Head? Kind of. It's like more in like the center. Oh, okay. So Sheep's Head's sort of like around the peripheral, like the bottom. Yeah. And then Gravesend is like north. There's no trains that go there. All these Italian neighborhoods, there's like no, there's no trains <laughs> yeah. that pass through it. Like <laughs> Diker Heights, like Gravesend. They're like, yes, well, we don't want that. <laughs> As no, Frank thank you. pointed <laughs> out before. Yeah, yeah. As Fra- yeah, 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 Frank yeah. pointed out, uh, or yeah, Frank used to be on the show, he uh, pointed out like anywhere the trains go, <laughs> that's when the blacks come in. <laughs> Which is like, Jesus Christ, Frank. <laughs> They did that in um, in Beverly Hills. Did they? Yeah, like yeah. L.A. has some trains, and then for the longest time they've been trying to build trains that because it's like kind of a horrible public transportation yeah. city. And it was always Beverly Hills was like, yeah, we don't really want like Mexican and black people to like just be able to like ride to our neighborhood. <laughs> but now they got trains, so they're fucked. Well, if you live in L.A. <laughs> and if you're Mexican or black, go to Beverly Hills, walk around a little bit, you know? Yeah. Take your clothes off. <laughs> Show crack open a fire hydrant yeah. <laughs> because Show they can't stop you. Show it's the public people property. Some culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> some uh, TV exec or whatever. Yeah. So, um, so he was like bullied a lot. Uh, you know. Yep. And I mean, I guess they said that in the documentary. Like, you know, he, hey, if some some guy was like, hey, if you tie a puppy to a fence and beat him every day, he's gonna. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna change him. <laughs> Thanks for putting it in terms I can understand, yeah, Mister Mom. You. Yeah, he's not gonna like fences anymore. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so then Tommy Pateri, he starts watching uh, the Green Hornet, which had Bruce Lee in it, and uh, he he becomes really interested in karate. So he asks his parents, "Can he take karate classes?" His dad is like, "Yeah, all right. I think I moved enough pixie sticks uh, this week." <laughs> Did you ever have a sales job? Yeah, I yep. sold, um, it's kind of embarrassing, I sold, uh, like, extreme sports videos. Uh-huh. And, um, Out of a trunk? No, like, I worked <laughs> for a distributor, yeah. and I approached it like a job, like, because yeah. I came Were out they of, like... Were they, like, video cassettes? Yeah, I mean, it's like, you know, this the best snowboarding movie, the best skateboarding movie, surfing, you know. Yeah. And I approached it, I'd be like, I'd call them. They were already clients, but I'd be like, hey, we got all these new movies, um, just, and my boss, like, takes me over, and he goes, you, like, want to, like you want to like talk to them how they talk. And so like, then I started yeah, calling yeah, yeah. them and being like, what's up, dude? <laughs> and I sold so many. Once you I did? Yeah. Once I transitioned to like, and I would like talk to them like I know them. Yeah. I'd be like, Corey, dude, what's up? How's the winter going? Sick. Very cool. <laughs> uh, man, there are some dope new surf videos. You, out. you sold sports videos over the phone. Yeah. It was all like already existing customers mm. and we were Atlas distributors. So mm. we just like, moved stuff but it's funny every sales job i've ever been involved with whoever runs the sales company always ends up being a dirtbag yeah like no matter what it's like sales just create dirtbags yeah but also there really isn't like sales anymore like you can buy anything off of amazon so there's not the the days of like talking to somebody or negotiating or buying stuff you know it's like everything is just googleable so yeah yeah, you can't uh, middlemen are going away you know yeah, who, who was buying these good. sports Send videos? Send to the oven. <laughs> <laughs> um, like what kind of <laughs> no, like, are they like Suncoast videos? Or uh, it was like surf shops, snowboard shops, oh, skateboard shops. Gotcha. It just it was a very niche market, and it's like definitely doesn't exist anymore because of the internet. Andy has history of like changing his, the way he talks to please people. Because when we would move together, like sometimes we'd work with like guys that were more hood, and Andy would like slowly adopt yeah. their speech patterns. It's like bad. A- I I have a like a chameleon esque because <laughs> I was raised by a lot of women, so I had like very feminine qualities. Yeah. So when I'd be around guys, I'd have to guy it up, and then when I no, I feel that way yeah. too. Though. And then yeah. also, yeah. I grew up in a very 
I grew up in basically one of the wealthiest neighborhoods. I was in the like the not the wealthiest part of that neighborhood of Seattle, but yeah. I was in the wealthiest neighborhood. So I just very white kind of um Seattle white though, which is like, you know, we eat a lot of Indian food kind of <laughs> <laughs> um but then um I went to school in the hood. So like I very quickly started like learning how to like acclimate to wherever I was. So then, like, as soon as I, like, started busting into the hood, I was like, yo, what's up, guy? You know? <laughs> yeah, we did a job in City Island, and it was me and Andy and this other guy, and Andy's like, yeah, dudes be like fishermen and shit up here. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm reading Proust. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm worried if I ever moved to, like, England that I would totally come back being like, cheerio, you know? I would, I'd be the same way. Yeah. I definitely Matt make a note so we, so we can yeah, edit that, that out. out. Yeah, yeah got for it. that thing you said for no reason that <laughs> serves no <Got> purpose. <laughs> no, because when I'm in England, though, like right. um, in England, they'll be like, um, they'll. This is how they'll ask you like your day. They'll be like, "Was it good?" Yeah. Like they'll always ask questions mm-hmm. like that, and then I'll catch myself starting to do that. I'll be like, "Yeah, was the day all right?" Yeah. Like <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? Yeah. Mob associate Frank Angie thought that uh, Patera sounded like Mickey Mouse or Minnie Mouse. Hey. It's funny that he made a distinction, though. <laughs> Wait, what was the other one? You Mickey Mouse or Minnie Mouse. That's so mean. Yeah. He's like, I can't tell Mickey uh, Mouse sounding Mickey Mouse ass motherfucker. Or like a, like, a, like a gay lady mouse. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, so when Pater is a kid, or, well, no, when he's like 18, he enters a karate tournament and he wins. And he gets a scholarship and he goes to Tokyo to train in the ways of the samurai. And he's really disciplined, and he even, like, changes his diet, and he changes his habit, and he gets really into, like, into... Sushi. Yeah, karate. (laughs) Which, it's funny that his life still... He stops eating funnel cakes every day. (laughs) (laughs) You know, Japan's all right, but you can't get a good ziti here. (laughs) He's in in, in Japan, he's like, so, uh, uh, can I, like, rent, like, a mother to do my laundry? (laughs) (laughs) Jesus. Fucking wops. (laughs) <laughs> These fucking wops and their mothers. It's so funny hearing my mother talk about Italian men because she like you know hates my dad for being you know so spoiled. Yeah, and she's like, oh, these Italian men, their mothers all do their laundry. It's like they're in love with them or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wait, so then um, you were saying earlier like he was like all he was like in Japan like studying with samurai masters and shit, but he like clearly didn't garner any of the lessons. <laughs> of karate. Yeah, he just missed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know much about, I mean, it's a shame we don't know more about Japanese culture, but I think, isn't it like, you know, all these karate movies, it's not like Bruce Lee just goes up to a, <laughs> to a <laughs> yeah, lady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, obviously there's like the philosophy versus like, I mean, Japan did attack Pearl Harbor. So like, they're not yeah. always, you know, like not everybody in Japan's following the way of the right whatever. They're like, maybe he just went to the, the other karate <laughs> school. They're like, you must be like Pearl Harbor. <laughs> You must attack first. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. We should. Uh, I oh, wish that'd be he... cool if he like got trained by the Yakuza. Mm-hmm. Those oh. guys are fucking nuts. Yeah. yeah. They're always. Also, you they're know, it's fucking gnarly. Yeah. They're, they're, they're <laughs> so fucking, fucking sick, sick dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's how people in, um, in San Diego talk. They're like, ha, oh, what the fuck? All right, bro. They like, like, dude, it's so fucking sick, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so sick. All right. Um, but uh, what I like about organized crime—not really the Italians, but like a lot of organized crimes—they wear suits, which is such a weird thing to be like beating the shit out of somebody in a suit or killing somebody like in a you know because the Japanese guys they all dress like. They Why don't do you think velour like- was invented? <laughs> <laughs> so you could. Beat hey Mario, I, you think you could make me something that like I could <laughs> chop up a body in? <laughs> yeah, you know those mesh, those purple mesh tracksuits. The yeah. blood just yeah <laughs> rinses right off. Um, yeah, so it's funny that like, yeah, he's studying karate in Japan, and he's like, they're like, you must learn the way of the samurai, and he's like, I think I'm just gonna rough help some deli owners. <laughs> Yeah, I liked how you said during the doc, you're like, oh, yeah, he studied karate to beat the shit out of, like, crackheads. And fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Stupid. No junkie went, uh, got by him. <laughs> <laughs> I was on the L train yesterday, and I saw these cops were writing a summons to a churro lady. You know, just. Oh, fuck, you know, fuck that. You. Yeah. Just doing the doing the good work. Bullshit. Of the NYPD. And then next to them was another cop in a white shirt. In a, in a jacket, I saw a white shirt, which I think means he's that's a captain, right? 
Yeah, yeah. it means they're higher so, up. So, yeah. They had to call in the brass call, yeah. <laughs> to fucking ruin this <laughs> lady who's literally like hid in a bucket. <laughs> yeah. She was like in it like like a sealed container yeah. for like three weeks so she could come here and sell stale churros. And they're like, hey, sorry, ma'am. It's against code. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to write you up. Big but- sting operation following her around the subway. <laughs> One time me and Andy were doing a moving job and he bought oranges off this lady from the like side of the road. And he's like showing off his spanish he's like really good or you know however whatever he says <laughs> he's like uh i don't try like i'm sure the lady knows two dollars and but i'm i'm like andy why did you assume she spoke spanish and he was like i don't know because she's brown and selling oranges <laughs> <laughs> well she was selling oranges it's not you know excellent assumption though you weren't wrong it's like i'm like uh cono questo por los naranjas and she's like hey Disculpa, solamente fale portuguese. Like, why are you speaking what Portuguese? <laughs> Dude, could you do could you do Spanish in your like uh, surfer accent? Do you think? Uh, maybe like uh, <laughs> give it a go. Uh, well, like people in Mexicans yeah, in certain parts of Mexico. Oh, don't they talk. a star la <laughs> Yeah, El there's Banya. that, but like also like. Um, like a lot of parts of Mexico, like they kind of have a drawn out. Like I think it's Chilangos, which are like people from the capital. But eres la neta, way. <laughs> you know, like a lot of that. Like it's like kind of already surfery, right? Don't they install la biblioteca? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's like shaking down some convenience store. He's like, don't make me get my nunchucks. <laughs> My nunchucks. Listen, uh, Tommy Karate's not going to find us, man. All of a sudden, three ninja stars hit the wall next to him. Ah, yeah. God damn it. <laughs> yeah. He's a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is what I want. Okay, so why don't we do this on the show? I think we can make the case that the Banano family wasn't as bad as the NYPD who calls the captain <laughs> to write a ticket for the fucking Choro. Yeah, lady. yeah. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Also, like... I keep on thinking about like like the thing, and you know what's funny? Those, those, those churros ahead. are always stale, and I I don't care. I don't. I don't care at all. Yeah. I want to support them and yeah, also yeah. eat b- butter, flour, and cinnamon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and if you get sick, it's like you kind of know what you're getting into anyway. It's you're never gonna your get sick risk. from a churro. You'll get sick from like a you know perishable. But those churros could be like on the fucking tracks, and you'd still be <laughs> yeah, fine. Right, right, right. But you know what else these what else these pigs do? They confiscate the fucking churros. Do they? Sometimes they do it. Sometimes they eat them. They just like fucking share them at the monsters. fucking monsters. They just wow. share them at the stage. I, yeah, I like, think yeah. it's easy to oh, argue. You can't be doing this. Uh, yeah. It's easy to argue that the NYPD has probably done just as much bad as any crime yeah. family. Probably yeah. a lot worse, actually. Mm. Yeah, well, what they, that's an ambitious episode, but we should we should do that. Yeah, or we could just interview one person of color, <laughs> which, which we have <laughs> that, yet. We have yet really to do on the show, but they're hard to they're hard to yeah. I know <laughs> they're hard to get though. They're also busy, dude. What they probably do is they probably bust somebody for drugs like weed and then they're like oh where can we go get some food and then they go bust the churro lady you know yeah just get what they want you could have order. thomas yeah. dale on here if he's ever back out here not that he's a person of color but his dad's a cop oh okay i think he's nypd too yeah um Hell yeah. you also didn't bring up the fact that uh tommy karate worked in a chopstick factory well yeah so after the scholarship <laughs> was over he got work in a chopstick factory so he could continue to study well, so what's the ways this, of the samurai what's this, jesus christ what's this what's scholarship this? program like you won uh you, torn- you we're gonna fly you to japan <laughs> you got a, a straw mat on the floor of this buddhist monastery and uh, as much rice as you can eat <laughs> I like that the person running the scholarship in my mind is also in the mob. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Tommy, congratulations. Uh, you're the number one Harijuku girl. <laughs> <laughs> karate, I mean, karate was really big. I mean, like, I guess karate was the CrossFit of the 70s. Yeah, for right? sure. So it was also sexy. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Like, guys, like, because, like, disco and all that stuff kind of guys, like, it used to be like you could be a tough guy and dance. Yeah. That's a real weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Travolta? Yeah. That's Frank's favorite movie. <laughs> Is it? Know, yeah, oh, Frank. Terranova. Terranova, yeah. Um, um, and, and they didn't have the cool uh, martial arts yet either. They didn't have like jujitsu and all the other like ground fighting things. But I don't, I think that's weird that you would call those the cool ones. You think jujitsu well, is cool? They're not, yeah. They're cool would, in the You and Jamie effective. Kilstein. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, you just admitted that you are a big fan. You're a Jamie Kilstein apologist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I am. You're like, his wife kind of had. 
I, well, I, I only say that because, like, I remember in middle school when somebody did take karate, they got more bullied. because yeah, but they, they never knew how to do it. Right. Either. They got the one right. belt, and then they wore it to school, and then they just did one of these punches, and they're like, oh, that kid's definitely going to get beat up. I remember I almost got in a fight with a guy that was, like, a black belt in karate, and I didn't fight him. But then, like, my friends fought him, and they were, like, bad kids. Like, a lot of them are, like, criminals, you yeah. know, now. They just picked up a garbage can, like, beat him with <laughs> yeah, it. They just <laughs> beat the little... shit out of him, and yeah. he couldn't be, like, all right, first you're supposed to bow before yeah. we start fighting. He was, like, posed up, and a guy just hit him with a chain, and he was, like, oh. <laughs> this is what I wanted to ask you guys. Did you guys ever get bullied in school? I got bullied my freshman year of... Um, of high school but i invited it because it was like good attention it made me popular to like kind of invite bullying because then i also got like invited to parties and stuff like that but um <laughs> and he was like hey guys um like just a- so you know i'm here so if you want to like if you want to no, like twist my like, nipples or there was something these guys that were like on the football team yeah. and they were like kind of you know dumb asses and i could easily be like Hey, cool car, Jay. And then they'd beat the shit out of me. Yeah. But everybody would be like, oh, look, Andy's in the kind of conversation. Yeah. So it was like a decent razzing. But you know what? Also, uh, like, I went to school in the hood. So there's a very fine differentiation. Like, I went to school in, like, the hood. Yeah, they did, like, <laughs> the hood. And I, um, like, live in the hood. So I'm, like, really tapped into, like, you know. <laughs> The, I'm basically like the, kind of African American. Yeah, in a way. <laughs> no, I mean, but I like I went to like in middle school. It was like the height of I've the, seen the wire crack. <laughs> I have seen the wire, all of it. Uh, <laughs> but it was like the height of the um, crack epidemic, gang epidemic. Like kids yeah. were getting killed, mm. but you, those kids didn't bully anybody. They either yeah. robbed or beat you up right. or left you alone. It wasn't right, like right. they'd be like. Hey Andy, nice backpack. You know, and like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. pick on me. <laughs> they right. Just beat the shit out of you and take your backpack. Yeah. Well, the tough part about like so when some when someone is uh when someone is like made a target, right? And that's the tough thing about um you know, going to school or anything, it's like you just don't want to be the one that gets made fun of because everybody oh. piles on that kid. Yeah. So yeah. like my friend LJ has this funny story about how like uh when we were in middle school, wrestling shirts were really in. And he didn't even like wrestling, but he just wanted to fit in. So he asked his mom to buy him like a WWF, you know, T-shirt. <laughs> and uh, so he shows up for sixth grade at the bus the first day. And this kid, Desi, looks at his shirt and goes, hey, what's up with your wrestling shirt? And he like pulls out the tag and he goes, this wrestling shirt's from Kmart. This isn't even a real wrestling shirt. <laughs> and it's just like, ruined his life. Ruined Dude, life. that's so awful. First yeah. off, they, the kid felt like he could touch his tags. If yeah. you let anywhere, if you let a kid anywhere near your tags, it's over. Yeah, it's over. <laughs> you know? yeah, but he like, like didn't even was just trying to fit in, didn't even like it. I'm not a I proponent mean, of school shootings, but I do. No, but you understand. Ah. Like, I yeah. understand because I remember seeing kids get bullied and then they yeah. would finally snap. And it was always like some kid like who could like. You know, he's like a mouth breather and he had like mm-hmm. a bunch of psoriasis and, you know, he dragged his backpack and all that kind of shit. Yeah. yeah. And somebody would pick on him and then one day he'd snap and like smash somebody's face against a desk with like a math book. Right. And you were like, I get that. Like yeah, that kid yeah, deserved yeah. that shit. I was that kid sometimes. I would <laughs> I would snap because my cousin and, you know, like older kids. And then, uh, yeah, you one time I like jumped on my cousin's back. He was in a pool. <laughs> I just like jumped on his back and hit him in the back. And he like flips over and starts crying. Yeah, <laughs> of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's like um, uh, that that movie, The Christmas Story. Is that what it's called? The, mm-hmm. When he snaps and he beats the shit out of the bully. Yeah. Like, oh, that's a yeah. great scene. Yeah. And if he would have had his BB gun, he would have fucking just shot the entire <laughs> family. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. I got bullied in eighth grade. Uh, they started a rumor about me that I liked gay porn. Uh huh. Oh boy, that was the that was the well, worst. Well, it was easy to start that rumor because it was <laughs> in your backpack. <laughs> but also, I mean, you, you just, just watched it in the library. Matt. Sometimes you go out to gay porn and just appreciate the filmmaking. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in the bodies, dude. And this was like right when the internet was like starting up. I was it too beautiful. Oh, Matt. <laughs> Matt's like, it's not, I'm not gay. <laughs> <laughs> Matt's Look like, no, I'm just, I'm, I'm just, I'm working out. I want to come with it's his abs. Want model, like, how do you get his, how do you get video? abs like that? <laughs> Double the dicks. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes, you know, sometimes I wish I could fuck another man because I appreciate fitness so much. <laughs> yeah. Bring it back. <laughs> I do follow Mateo on Instagram on a That dude's ripped. Jesus Christ. What the fuck does he do? Yeah. I follow stuff. Only gay dudes <laughs> get that buff, right? 
I think so, yeah. Like, it's like Geraldo had the bit where he's like, you're going to be talking about your kids. You're like, look at this kid. He's built like a gay guy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, that's what it seems like because uh, that's the only... Uh, I think it's because it's just like, like I think a lot of things that dudes don't appreciate about being a modern gay guy is you get to be like kind of a bro and you also mm-hmm. get to fuck who you want to. Yeah. So you get to just be like, work out, fuck your bros, work out, you know, get <laughs> oh, drunk, man. fuck your bros. Yeah. And that's the lesson what of today. What a life. <laughs> <laughs> what, a, what an amazing life. <laughs> Fuck no, the your only, bros. Uh, no, is but, there, have you done an episode about, is there a gay guy that's in the, like, mob that was accepted? Not in the Italian mob, but the, the British mob had a couple guys who, uh, oh, yeah, those, the Cray brothers. Yeah. Right? Yeah, but there are, I think, and then the Medellin cartel had a, uh, yeah, but we'll, we'll look into that. The, yeah. But the Italians would never allow that. Also, no women. No, uh, the Italian, they, they just all closet gay guys. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so. Yeah, I'd never yeah. let a like I'd never let a faggot in my family. <laughs> hey, uh, Bobby, can you grab my hair gel? My ponytails. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> you say that in, like in a tanning booth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I wax my taint, but only because you know it's more comfortable. <laughs> hey, honey, uh, g- grab my velour, my maroon velour tracksuit. <laughs> right. I don't want any of that gay juice getting on it. <laughs> yeah. And but, not to transition back into the, to yeah. this guy, but like his mentor, his nickname was Whack Whack, right? That's pretty gay. Yeah. Who was what was Whack Whack? Because he killed people, right? Um, <laughs> that, so, so he said, yeah. <laughs> what a <laughs> dumb nickname. Yeah, I know. They're so like, him. your nickname's Whack Whack. He's like, are you sure you don't want to like <laughs> maybe workshop that a little bit? <laughs> now nah, you're yeah, Whack Whack. All right, yeah. A couple episodes, we, there was a guy named Fat Tony Chiodo. <laughs> oh, yeah. So his name was just Fat Chode. <laughs> They have either like great nicknames or, or bad ones. The Do you have a joke about that on your album? What about the Fat Tony? Uh, yes. About how like he's Fat Tony, but like he's blurred out. Yeah, he's blurred out in the documentary, and so his boss is in a cell, being like, "When I find out which Fat Tony that is, <laughs> hey, I'm gonna fucking kill him." <laughs> Uh, But here's the thing with bullies is like when you're the target, everybody just piles on and everybody takes out their aggression. They're like teenage, you know, whatever. It's also like a survival thing, too. It's like you don't want to get bullied. So you bully. Yeah. Yeah. So it's 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 almost like a it's almost like a reverse pyramid scheme where when you're the kid who's a target, you just get you just absorb all of it. And there was a kid that moved into my elementary school. His name was Aaron Michko, and he he was new in second grade. And kids just started bullying him like right away. And um, I was like, ah, oh, this isn't cool. So I like befriended the kid, which <laughs> big was mis- the big biggest mistake. fucking mistake I've ever made in yeah. my life because this kid just kind of like latched onto me because I was the only like kid that was nice to him. So I we had, like I went over his house one time. My mom drops me off at like ten in the morning. I'm there till five o'clock in the afternoon. And I even hear like my mom calls and I hear him in the other room being like, no, he wants to stay. And this is like, you know, before cell phones, obviously he's like, no, he wants to stay. Yeah, we're having a good time. All right, bye. And he hangs up the phone. I'm like, Aaron, who is that? He's like, nobody. It's <laughs> 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 like, like a fucking prisoner at this kid's house. So but- it's like he kind of like I mean, and, and like he must have been on the spectrum. Yeah, like I remember like first day in ninth grade, we're in English class and the teacher's given the like assignment and he goes, can you wait one second? And he pulls out his fucking Palm Pilot and like waits for it to like boot up. So we're Jesus. all like, we are shoving that thing up his ass after school. <laughs> yeah. But but so it's like the kid didn't, but he just absorbed everybody's like wrath and, and rage. What was the main way that they uh, bullied him? They call him bitch go. <laughs> Oh, that's just, a good one. Nice. Yeah, my friend Andrew like threw white out on his jacket and like ruined his jacket. Oh, that's a bummer. I remember. I did. Yeah. Remember how popular those Adidas jackets were? Yeah. I like the ones with the hood. Yeah. I uh, I threw glue all over one kid's because he was annoying the shit out of me, <laughs> and he cried like he cried like yeah. a bitch. Yeah. Also, I threw an egg. I threw an egg at this kid one time. Boys are awful. Yeah. Yeah. I threw an egg and it hit this kid. I'm trying to think of my like most creative bullying because I used to do some really fun bullying. Yeah, like they used to sell bagels. <laughs> <laughs> they used to sell bagels in after second period, and we'd all go get bagels and sit in this hall and like, you know, hang Did you out. Say bagels. Yeah, bagel. Like a bagel. bagel. Am I saying it wrong? Bagel. 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 You know what the yeah. fuck I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And I would like take pieces and I would just throw them at nerds. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I would just buy a bagel to throw it at nerds. 
Dude, and my, I think a lot of them ended up being Jewish kids, so it kind of seemed like an anti-Semitic move. Right. Well, you didn't know that. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't. I was banging all the Jew bros. You just knew it was the kid that, uh, that read a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now he's like a millionaire, and you, and you live with me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you live in a fucking nine by six room? Look, look, he's always, you know, in his books, he's got that tiny hat, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's asking for it. Uh, dude, I think the hardest I ever laughed in my life was we were at uh, play practice and we were doing a production of uh, Narnia, <laughs> The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. But anyway, so it's like it's like January, and this kid Aaron has his uh, Halloween. He's still got Halloween candy, and he's like he like brought it in as a snack. And my friend Andrew, but Aaron would also like try to curse and like be cool and like fit in. Mm -hmm. So Andrew goes and like. He, so he had nerds in his hand. Andrew goes and smacks the nerds out of his hand. And Aaron jumps up and goes, Pussy! <laughs> <laughs> I've never like laughed harder. <laughs> and the kid was just devastated, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Uh, pussy! Because <laughs> uh, he was trying to, you know, talk like us. Anyway, I wonder what that kid's doing now. I Don't talk okay. like us, nerds. We should probably talk about, like, how many minutes in are we? Uh, 30. That's we should right. probably start talking about how Tommy fucking. Sometimes we blow through this pretty quickly, but it all it all is related. I also in eighth grade I had a girl bully. This girl Megan would just I sat next yeah. to her in science class and yeah. she would just like call me fat and tell but me she I was kind of like tough, right? She was like a bigger. No, she was like pretty. <laughs> oh and really? Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. a great thing. Yeah, yeah. and it was weird because I was like, how do I handle this? And we're grade? sure she didn't eighth, like you. Eighth grade. Yeah. Did she you just bang didn't... her later on? No. Huh. No, but she I, no. Um, I should though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you should. Actually, I'm gonna put her address on the sh on the show, and if we have any listeners who want to go pay her a little visit, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's how I get my revenge. All right, some um, guy shows up here, and he just like with a bag, a squirming <laughs> bag. <laughs> What's this? But in science class, she would just like call me fat and like and like uh, uh, tell me from? I didn't know how to. Yeah. Okay. Tell me, call me fat. Tell me I know how to dress. And I'm like, what? What is happening here? She wanted to bang you, dude. I'm kidding. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, Tommy comes back from Japan. We do, we do blow through this uh, expositional stuff pretty quickly. Sometimes Tommy comes back from Japan. He starts working for the Banana Family, but not right away, right? Isn't it first? He's just a drug dealer and he's beating up drug guys. Yeah. And he has like a, he has like a. That's when he like kind of meets Whack Whack. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's trying to make his bones, as they say in the doc. Yeah, well, the Banana family was the only. So all the five families were like, stay out of drugs because the except senses the were bananas. too long. Except exactly. The bananas. Yeah, they were like, we got to get into this. <laughs> no <laughs> I mean, one else is doing smart. it. Drugs is like, yeah. Until now, drugs were the only like. Now that they're legal, it's a little different. But like, mm -hmm. people find you to. It's the only sales job that people will be like, hey, yeah. I heard that you sell this thing. <laughs> it's the only sales job <laughs> yeah. where you'll get calls at four in the morning yeah. from someone who's like, uh, yeah, we should sell Coke. I thought about that. Coke? Yeah. Why would you want to do Coke over weed? Because like, weed's too easy. Weed's for kids. <laughs> we're adults. Although, Matt, we're adults, okay? Yeah. We're or like 30. Tide Pods. Yeah. Well, you Ooh. can get those anywhere. We'll like, sell Tide Pods to kids? Yeah, good I've been, idea. We got to compete with Target, though. <laughs> a claw, global fucking giant. I've been brainstorming a web series where me and Mike try to start working in the crack game at those projects over there. Yeah. But we don't. It's like it's just like we're just trying to make money. So it's like we just like we're ourselves and we're over there like hang, hanging out. We're like crack. Uh, is anybody buying crack? And then we get like robbed. And I'm like, I guess we got to shoot those guys. <laughs> Mike's yeah. like, ah, oh, this was a bad They're idea. I think we're weak. <laughs> No, I mean, that's the with crime that no one gets into it wanting to kill people, but then you know you just have to. It sounds like uh, Tommy Karate maybe wanted to kill people though. Oh, he he for sure did. Yeah, yeah, he was a psychopath. There was like I remember when I would take like um, martial arts classes. There was always that one kid that was really looking forward to beating the shit out of the other kids. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And the sensei's always like trying to like train you guys to use restraint. He's like fighting is always the last resort, and all the kids just like yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, I remember this kid that I grew up with, Justin Napolitano. Mm. He like he was a good friend of mine for a long time, but he uh, he always had guns. Like his dad would like buy him guns, uh, what? and he 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 wanted to be a sniper in the in the military, and okay. he would like he would like take his BB gun. He had real guns, which is really scary. Like when I have I have that joke about shooting AKs, it was his AK. Yeah, 
but um, he had BB guns and he would hide in the trees around his house and shoot pedestrians with the BB gun because he was like <laughs> testing out his sniper skills. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, like a real piece of shit. Um, but he ended up going to the and Army that Rangers. Kid grew up to be Chris Kyle. <laughs> yeah. No, the he American went, sniper. He went yeah. to. Uh, we well, got to practice on somebody. He went to Army Rangers and he actually got kicked out for a little bit because he said in basic training that he was looking forward to killing people. Mm. And they were like, yeah, you can't be that obvious about it. I mean, we all want to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, no, like, they like warfare is different. It was 9-11 yeah. too. Like some people were pretty worked up. Yeah. But then he, okay. he ended up becoming a fucking sniper. Mm -hmm. He got shot. Uh, like, we we kill people with computers more now, you know. We yeah. just sit in an office and push F one, and a, fa a family blows up. Yeah. yeah, we're we're more into like the business of like accidentally blowing up a wedding. Yeah. You know, a hundred percent. Yeah. Oh, we uh we use machines. We don't send people there. <laughs> but he created, a, uh, he created a he created a shooting range in his basement. What he took okay. he he stole all the phone books from the neighborhood. Like, okay. you know, when they would put phone books out on your porch? Yeah. And he created, like, this wall of phone books so that he could shoot live rounds into it. Holy fuck. That's kind of cool, but scary. It was terrifying. I'm yeah. glad I was his friend and not the opposite side. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So how did you guys fall apart, friendship-wise? Well, when I graduated from high school, I realized that I was hanging out with horrible people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. A lot of them are dead or in prison. It's great. Nice. Did you hear about that YouTube star that uh, had a phone book and his girlfriend shot him and he died? Like it was, they tried to make a viral video. Yeah, oh, just wasn't great. a thick enough book. So sometimes I love when that stuff happens. <laughs> Listen, we're we're comics. We need YouTube stars to die. <laughs> we need like. If oh no, a Vine star died. <laughs> he probably yeah. had a family that loved him. Go fuck yourself. I hope you fucking, <laughs> I hope you fucking die. Seriously. Another fucking. Vine star overdose. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Uh, Good. Maybe I can headline the fucking San Antonio <laughs> <laughs> shithole improv. Because he's because he's dead. <laughs> I call the improv. I'm like, hey, I, hey, I heard uh, Matthew Logan is uh, gone. Yeah, I was looking at your uh, at your schedule, and it looks like the um, the the Deutsch brothers are supposed to be there. <laughs> but I also but saw that one themselves? of them, yeah, one yeah. of them got arrested for um, sexually, you know, molesting a neighbor. Um, <laughs> does that mean that weekend's open? <laughs> A dirty fucking business. So, uh, so Tommy Patera, he starts uh, working as a drug dealer. He starts to uh, he starts to sell drugs. He's got a crew. He's obsessed with rats. He doesn't want rats in his crew. He's very selective about who he lets into his inner circle. Yeah. He also, won't even let people have beards or mustaches because he says <laughs> rats have whiskers. <laughs> what a fucking. <laughs> Sometimes these well, guys can Andy, be careful. He listens. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Well, sometimes these guys can be so brilliant, and yeah. then it's like they do things like like the rat at the end of The Departed. You wanted to be like Scorsese. Come on, man. Oh. Marty. Come on. Oh yeah, yeah. The yeah. imagery. Yeah. Like this is level one. I think when that movie came out, I was like, I like thought that was cool though. I was yeah, too of course. To, yeah. Um, get it. <laughs> It's a rat. <laughs> but you know what? One thing about if if the listeners don't know this, Mike is really good at like nuanced, like kind of piece, like the details that he always loves are like the, you know, he and he tells you them like a like an autistic person. Like he'll be like, Andy, uh, did you see you know, like that time that you were doing the taxi driver monologue and Michael K. Williams was standing next oh, to us? Oh, that was great. Yeah, we were high doing a moving job and I was quote, I was doing taxi driver. You're doing it perfectly because Mike does have a theater background. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> Michael Kelly Williams was standing next to us and he was like loving it. And we were stoned and we thought that it was like, you know. And I hadn't seen The Wire and Andy was like, holy shit. And I was like, oh, hey, how you doing? <laughs> Mike just thought he was a magical Negro. <laughs> <laughs> no, but apparently he was like, you got something. Yeah. And you got something. That Jewish altar that we had to set up Fuck, every Saturday. Man. I broke the <laughs> I broke the piece and they just had a broken altar. <laughs> that was such a, that, I mean, that's what I loved. That was like a hustle that I just picked up. Yeah. And it was like five hundred dollars a week. Oh. Hmm. You paid me uh I 75. paid you seventy five an hour. <laughs> yeah, no, I know it was good. I was a good, a good boss. Yeah, that's good. a good it deal. Good. How much yeah. do you pay your people when you trained? I pay I pay everybody very well. Because I want the best people. No rat. Like Frank. <laughs> Um, so yeah, he's obsessed with rats. He won't let, so he's like, so it's pretty obvious that he's, he's, uh, has a taste for blood. Tommy Pateri. He loves to kill people. He, uh, he's kind of like Roy DeMeo, the way he disposes of their, their bodies. Yeah. 
He was um, also known for robbing drug dealers and then selling their stash. Yeah. So. I mean, that makes sense. That's one thing yeah. that, like, that's a nice thing about drugs is they don't, like, they're not like Bitcoins where, like, it's like, ah, Coke's not that valuable right now. <laughs> right. Coke is like, <laughs> Coke's Coke. Coke's the opposite of Bitcoin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> People always want it. Yeah, that's Coke why you got to invest in it to how keep much your is, portfolio How much stable. is a gram of Coke? I don't know. Um, I don't. Do, I never see. did coke. Never so dabble. Let me. Let me. Let me. Let me check. Yeah. Right. I did coke. Charles Schwab. Com. <laughs> I did coke once with a bunch of TV writers, but like those people just made so much money. I don't think they gave a shit. But I think mm. we did between the bunch of us. I, this is the only time I've ever done coke. We did five hundred dollars worth of cocaine. How much does that look? I mean, that's it crazy. looks like uh, maybe that much of a bag. Damn. We did a lot of cocaine that night. Okay, I understand why but you guys want to sell that over weed now. That's the one night that I... Also, the the thing about coke is if you get in the right market, you're only dealing with people that are, like, successful dirtbags. Yeah. Opposed to, like, weed, you're probably dealing with, like, kind of a mix of people. And the whole thing is, is like, the whole dangerous thing is, like, I'm not scared of getting arrested. I'm scared of getting a gun put in my mouth. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. that's, yeah, yeah. that's the only part of it. <laughs> but imagine you're, you're just, you're just like a single parent, like your kid needs an operation or something. And then you're like, all right, I guess I'll sell Coke. And then you get robbed by some drug dealer. Yeah. And then you have to kill him to prove you're not weak. It's like a whole like slippery yeah, slope. You got to go you know? to his family, you know, and you got to go like bust the drug house and you got to take his kids. Yeah. And you got to yeah. like <laughs> hold them off the edge of a roof and just just so like people let. And then he just agrees get, with you. He complies. But you still throw the kid off the roof because right. you want them to know that like right. if you even if you even graze me, I will fucking end you. <laughs> I'd be such a good criminal. I would be such a pussy. I would let them walk all over me. <laughs> I'd be like, all right, yeah. that one was That's free. Right. <laughs> He's not as much of a drug dealer as he He does our tech stuff. Buys drugs for the neighborhood drug dealers. He built our, he built our, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He built our website. <laughs> um, That's a real thing now, though. There's a commercial like, in it. What? Well, just with Silk Road and stuff. Mm-hmm. You can totally buy any drug over the internet. Oh, okay. There's a commercial in the in the taxi cabs, and there's like some like theater guy, some like fat theater guy, like singing to an old lady. He's singing from Filler on the Roof, and it's like a whole thing about how like there's a program where like the, this guy comes and like will sing to old people and you know keep them company and shit like that. And he's like, yeah, it's very rewarding for me. I get to um, I get to you know give back. I get to use my theater background and give back to the community. And uh, they, you know, it shows like him like walking with the old lady outside like her her apartment. Be funny if it cut to her closet. She was like asleep with like a smile on her face and he's just putting on her clothes and like jerking off like holding her stockings to his face <laughs> yeah i mean why, that's why you get into theater <laughs> i get to give back and you know i miss my mother and um when she used to punish me by stepping on my throat with a high heel <laughs> But then it was like, oh yeah, it's this, it's this program, it's this great program. And then they were like, uh, the service starts at forty five dollars an hour, and there's a four hour minimum. So I'm like, I thought that was like a volunteer that you have to pay some fucking fag to come and sing to you. <laughs> Oh, some, I should have known from the act fucking, out. <laughs> so fucking out of work, like you know. You know what I love is like um, when when like a controversy will blow up, and it's like a real controversy, like Rose McGowan coming out and the, all the Weinstein stuff. Yeah, her publicist just killed herself. Really? Yeah. Jesus. No. Yeah. But like one thing I love is that all the dirt bags that will try to capitalize on it, and one of those was Tommy um, Patera. Yeah, Tommy Patera <laughs> said that on the set of Mean Girls. No, on the set of Mean Girls, <laughs> the fat gay kid mm-hmm. recently who is a bad stand up. He mm-hmm. does stand up at Flappers. Uh-huh. That you do know what I'm talking about the yeah, fat yeah, gay yeah, friend. Yeah, yeah. He um Guy Branham. Yeah, basically <laughs> I thought they were the same person for a little bit. <laughs> he looks like guy <laughs> well, yeah. with hair. Yeah. Um he uh he came out and said that I think it was, I want to say it was Lizzie Kaplan or Rachel McAdams. He tried to join the Me Too movement by saying that, like, one of those stars was mean to him. Like, just, like, Mm. the most craven, like, (laughs) try to capitalize. I remember when Beth Stelling came out about Kale. Yeah. Another girl in the improv community tried to be like, I also want to say that, like, um, my boyfriend was like verbally abusive for years and it was like, really? You're going to try to like, <laughs> I love, I love people that are that. That should be hashtag me too also. Yeah, me too also. Sorry. I, I believe we should listen to everybody's story. Anyway. <laughs> Shut your fucking <laughs> Have you ever done stand up at an old folks home or like a VA hospital before? I've done no. it at a, no, like I would a like bunch to. of um, 
sober facilities, which right. is, you know, they're that basically actually, intellectually, you know. Yeah, I don't think they'd enjoy my material, but uh, if they do... I it's know they have $45 an hour and have Mike Racine do pedophile jokes at your nursing home. Yeah, I just, you could go jerk off yeah. with their fucking socks. I love to give back at $45 an hour, which is like what it costs to fucking get a dirtbag lawyer in Queens. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've done stand-up at a VA hospital in Phoenix out in a parking lot, and it was the worst show ever. A guy fell asleep in his wheelchair in the front row. I mean, I guess it was a parking lot, so it wasn't really a row. But Was he a troop? Yeah, they were all at the VA. You steal his valor? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I tried. His valor was sticking out of his pocket. So, <laughs> Yeah, so he marries his high school sweetheart. And she's a fucking drip. Carol Boguski. <laughs> <laughs> it's, so, it's so on bar with your joke about yeah. Mrs. Goo Goo Gots. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it, it's so funny. Like, I mean, now, you know, Italians are pretty much like blended in. It doesn't matter that like like you'll hire like Andrea Masterino at, at your like finance company or whatever. Yeah. But like imagine like the 20s, all these like dark people who are loud with like funny names. Yeah. <laughs> like, get out of my fucking country. <laughs> Just get out. <laughs> and it's so funny that you guys like. The second that we accepted you as white people, you were like, but look at these spooks. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. They got no dignity. <laughs> yeah. Mom, come do my underwear laundry. <laughs> Ma, where's my socks? <laughs> my fucking great grandmother did uh, my faggot father's laundry <laughs> till he was like 29. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he marries Carol Boguski. They get divorced. He meets, so he starts looking for a girl who can support the lifestyle. He meets a a, a, a fire, a real firecracker, Celeste Lapari, who's a neighborhood girl that neighborhood acts girl. like a woman. What did they say? It was such. She a, basically uh, they said she, she acts, acts like, like a, a lady, thinks like a man. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> she she, she was, embodies all of Steve Harvey's books. She was pre uh, gender binary. It's <laughs> yeah, very yeah, clear yeah. that she was a lesbian, and that's what. Oh, you think? No. Uh, but, yeah. She was gorgeous, curvy, and fast. But it's talking. funny they were like she was like she was, she was like a Deb. They hmm. were like she's gorgeous, and then like it showed the picture, and it was like it looked like somebody who'd been like at the bar a little too long. Like maybe you know she had some lines in her face. Well, <laughs> you and I have different tastes, my friend. <laughs> no, <laughs> Deb is a beautiful woman. Oh, yeah, no, that's what, no. But I was talking about her. Yeah. Oh, you're talking about Celeste. Yeah, yeah. C yeah. Celeste Lapari. Yeah. Celeste Lapari looked like she knew how to. Um, change out a tab uh, a slot machine you know what are those things called pull tabs yeah yeah she looked like she hung out in a bowling alley for a couple decades she was good at cutting the heads off of parking meters <laughs> yeah. taking the quarters putting the quarters in the song oh, karate goes who is that <laughs> <laughs> who is that dream ball she's a lady <laughs> whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> she looks like the type of lady that could take a roundhouse to the gut. <laughs> That's so. Oh, oh man. That's imagine a imagine dating a imagine dating a, a wife beater who knows karate. That's gotta be the worst. <laughs> She, like, her brother's like, did he put his hands on you? And she goes, no, no it was his, different. It was his feet. <laughs> hey, hey, Celeste, hey, Celeste, you taught him I never put my feet on you. <laughs> Listen, I love you. I, <laughs> I never let a nunchuck on her, Your Honor. <laughs> I never, I never used a throwing star. I never used a katana blade, a side, no bow staff. When we came home, the sides were left in the coat closet. That's just kids running around. You better clean your room or you're going to get the bow staff. <laughs> Did you get beaten as a kid? Uh, no. I mean, I got spanked until like maybe age five or six, and then they lost control of me. And then he, yeah. and he liked it too much. <laughs> like, Why is he hard? <laughs> spank, spank me, mom. No, I yeah. remember um, my dad one time spanked, he got his hand wet to spank me. What? Like, yeah. It was like double, like, because it makes the, the spanking like more. That's common then, right? Yeah, it wasn't like okay. a, it sounds fucking disgusting, yeah. but it was like a, it made the slap of it like worse. Right. Oh. Um. And then, you know, a couple times I got, like, my mom basically <laughs> had a nervous breakdown when my parents got divorced, and she yeah. was just, like, a woman on the edge of insanity. Like, there's probably, like, a good chance that she had, like, rubber piping in the trunk of our car 
like willing to like, you know, kill the whole family at certain points of our life. She was yeah. definitely on the edge. Yeah. But, um, you know, occasionally I would say something and she would just like, you know, slap me in the head <laughs> a couple of times just to be like, shut the fuck up. But it was never like a regular thing. She kicked me out of the house. Yeah. 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 That, I think that happens. <laughs> You're a guy. Um, one time my brother built a sand, no, I built a sand castle and my brother knocked it over and I called him a motherfucker. I was at my grandfather's house. He had a little sand pit in his house. And then like half an hour goes by and I'm like on the couch watching TV and my grandfather, he's in his seventies at the time. He like storms in the room and starts like beating me with like both of his hands. And I'm, I'm just like, <laughs> I like then, how you're doing karate like, chops in this. Yeah, yeah. He's like hitting me and he's like, he's like, he stops for a second. He's like, did you say MF to your brother? And I'm like, no. And he's like, you're lying. And he like, keeps hitting me. I'm like, so why did you even ask then? What but is then, wrong with you? <laughs> I don't know, we're, we're animals. No, it's just so funny that like you guys have these like principles that are just so like irrelevant. Yeah, it's like, did you say MF or to your brother? <laughs> I'm gonna beat the shit out of you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you won't even it's say like, the word. Did you apply to college? Ah, who fucking cares? You can work at an ice cream shop. <laughs> <laughs> you can work your way up. You can lift bags of sand. Manager. Yeah, <laughs> just yeah. don't say MF. <laughs> All you need is your two <laughs> arms and your back for, you know, a good 20 years, maybe. Yeah, I live with my back. I'm not some fag. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very fag-heavy episode. God. Don't you love podcasting? Yeah. My whole family is fucking gay. I can say family. Really? You know what's funny? I think of all the terrible, like, life lessons that I learned from my family over the years. Like, one time my mom told me the story. She's like, you know, this guy that I worked with asked me out, and uh, I said no. And he said, is it because I'm black? And I said Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were talking the other night. You were talking about this, like how you were like kind of raised with all this racism, like yeah. just kind of, and you had to like buck it. Like you had to be like, oh wait, yeah. black people aren't trying to whatever. <laughs> I, I forgot what you said, but now like, it's irony. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's still. I mean, it's still in me. But you know, what are you gonna do? Yeah. But, but I would say, if anybody thinks you're racist, I've never met somebody who can you know talk to a black gay man as well as you. Who's that? I'm kidding. Oh, okay. Jason at the, the coffee shop. Oh, he's my best friend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I come in and like, they're like doing each other's hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Look, Jason did a, a makeover on me. <laughs> Mike, you're wearing a dress. <laughs> well, uh, well, you know. Uh, <laughs> it's fashion week. Yeah. So, so Celeste Lapari has a friend named Phyllis Birdie, and Phyllis is a real troublemaker. And uh, Phyllis is into drugs. Celeste does drugs, too. And because Patera is a drug dealer, he doesn't like that um, Celeste is uh, hanging out with Phyllis. And Because uh, Phyllis is a drug addict. She's yeah. a drug addict, yeah. But Celeste likes to party, too. You know. <laughs> As they do. So one night... Uh, Phyllis and uh, She's Celeste. Like very clearly a lesbian. It's like it's coming out. She's like Butch. She acts like a man. <laughs> she, she hangs she out with her butch? best. I mean, she's kind of got some big shoulders. Yeah. Go back to the picture. You'll see. <laughs> right. She's just tough looking broad. She did She did that like waddle that lesbians do. Yeah. She was like the... gorgeous. Jesus she looks Christ. like she can drive a semi truck. <laughs> <laughs> you know how like you can use, use your spot and they like walk yeah. like this? Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, All Jesus. Right. Um, anyway, she was gorgeous. Yeah. <laughs> she had a pack of rescued pit bulls. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Phyllis, uh, so one night they're having a good time. They go to the wrong number lounge. They're doing coke. They're on top of the world. And, uh, Celeste wants to go to sleep <laughs> and she can't sleep. She's wired. So she's like, oh, how am I going to fall asleep? Oh, I know what I'll do. I have some, uh, heroin. <laughs> so I'll inject some heroin into my veins and I'll be out like a light, <laughs> and I'll be able to go to work tomorrow. <laughs> and boy, did she sleep. And that's yeah. when that light bulb went out. <laughs> yeah. And then you could say she maybe entered a permanent sleep, the sleep of death. She went to she the died. big Con Edison. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, peace, Celeste. Go, blah, blah. Go. Uh, I'm, trying to, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to tag that. And I don't have anything. Where, where, where would she like to hang out? Where would she like to hang out? All right, peace. She went, to the, -ba -ba she went to the big Applebee's in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Celeste dies. So then, uh, so, so Patera's associate, Frank Ganji, has to call him and he's like, get over here. Uh, Patera comes over. And um, Phyllis is 
Frank's kind of like side piece, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they sort of like They that. fucking. They fucking. They fucking. My man. My man smashing. <laughs> um, so they, uh, so Tommy comes over. Celeste is dead. And uh, Tommy's furious. He wants to leave. And he's like, I'm going to kill Phyllis. He makes it his mission to kill Phyllis. Yep. Slaps her in front of a cop. <laughs> yeah. And the cops like, hey, I don't need this. I gotta go. I gotta go give tickets to the churro lady. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm a captain. <laughs> when you're a cap- when you're a captain in the NYPD, you just get you just get promoted to like the churro department, <laughs> the churro lady department. <laughs> That's your division. Hey, I can't deal with this domestic abuse. <laughs> There's a blind kid selling oranges on the BQE. <laughs> I gotta make sure his whole family gets deported. Okay. Hey, I'm, <laughs> hey, I'm retiring in March, and when I go, I go with a perfect record of busting these churro ladies. I'm not letting you escape, Maria. <laughs> there's, a bunch of, there's a bunch of kids that swam here from El Salvador. I gotta make sure that their juggling routine that they do on... <laughs> <laughs> Cross streets of Graham. Like, <laughs> Find me Lupe Rodriguez. <laughs> She's the most notorious, churro lady. elusive churro lady in all of New York. And I'm where not going, are they baking the churros? <laughs> I'm not going until she has a fifty dollars summons. <laughs> If you find out where the bakery is, <laughs> you shut down the whole operation. <laughs> we're going to raid their headquarters. Meanwhile, it's his, just a fuck. His cousin is unloading an entire shipping <laughs> container full of heroin. Full of, full of people. They're like human trafficking. <laughs> They're like, hey, sorry. I wish I could help. Hey, Gino, um, <laughs> can you stop what you're doing for a second? What, what do you think they make? <laughs> <laughs> I got to go find Luz Diaz. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking pigs uh, <laughs> Fuck all you pigs Your job is safe <laughs> <laughs> Anyway so So Frank Gangy tells Phyllis He's like you gotta leave town Tommy wants to kill you Did this dog piss on the floor again? No you spilled your coffee Oh okay <laughs> So uh, I yeah. The other day, the me dog. and Mike. The other day, me and Mike were watching a movie, and the dog just walked up and pissed on the DVD player. <laughs> <laughs> and we were like, "You fucking idiot! It, it like streams, so, you dumbass!" It was so, it was so disrespectful. <laughs> was like, I've never been so disrespected in my whole fucking life. <laughs> it was so funny though, because it was like, "How did he know to piss right on the DVD?" <laughs> <laughs> and what was funny? It's like it got in the, it got under the DVD yeah. player, and like even inside. It didn't even hit the floor. Yeah. It just hit the space between the DVD player and the fucking. You're lucky you got that thunder Dude, jacket he's, on. He's Oliver. so he's so fucking disrespect. I'll take him out and then he'll like shit and I'll pick up his shit and then he'll like go and he'll stop and he'll take like little dime sized shits yeah. like another one just as like a little fuck you. The other day he oh boy he shat while walking. I was so mad. Yeah. I was like, how am I supposed to pick that up? It's on the cement. <laughs> um. Well, listen, Matt, we're about we're at about 60 minutes right now. So do you want to do another part next week? Do you want to finish this next week? Or do you want to? Um, yeah, because we haven't talked at all about the body. Yeah, we was, haven't talked about the. Um, yeah, we're not that far at all. Let's just keep yeah, we're not going through it and I'll chop it in half. And then we'll make this a two part. Can you come? Can you come back next week, Andy? Yeah, I live here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. I mean, you, you know. You just, yes, I can. All right. All right. So, um. All right, so anyway, so let's let's leave it there, right? Yeah. Celeste dies, and uh, Tommy wants Phyllis dead. And also, one thing we should say is that Tommy, by this point, he's become a made guy. Mm-hmm. We haven't brought that up yet, that he got his bones, right? No. Yeah, he, he, he got his bones. He's like, <laughs> I love it that they, in the documentary we watched about it, he was like, and he killed him with the ruthless diligence of a samurai. It was just like he got out of a car, <laughs> shot yeah, a guy, yeah, yeah. got back in the car, yeah. and drove away. Yeah. You know, the way of the Japanese <laughs> warrior. <laughs> Tommy took out his katana and beat the man to death with it. <laughs> he like cut him. He just beats him with the side of <laughs> with the hill. He brought yeah. out his one- nunchucks. He distracted him, and then he shot him in the gut with a rug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Right, so uh, what we want to do was Andy has an idea for a show, and I think this is a great idea. And I think you should do it. So we should practice here. Okay. Right? So okay. like, 
we, you know, you're probably one of the people that I've been friends with for the longest. We've been friends for about eight years. So Andy has an idea for a show, right? Tell him what it is. It's called What's Wrong With Me. And that's the me is me. And, um, well, anyways, my life just got progressively worse and fell apart. And I have no idea why. So I'm trying to figure it out. I'm trying to get to the bottom of it. Yeah, mine is too. I don't think, I think that's fine. No, you're you're doing no, okay, okay though. Your life is great. And my life's not that bad, but I just can't seem to like. Your life is great, Michael. <laughs> you got <Stop>. me. <laughs> you got me and Oliver. <laughs> you got a dog that shits. <laughs> That takes little dime-sized dumps. As you, she's doing the and dishes. And you have to use your Metro card to clean it up. <laughs> As she's fucking doing the dishes. Stop being a fucking <laughs> Matt. I have to be the likable one. <laughs> also, I have to live here, and I, I adore Deb. So, right. Yeah. You know, I yeah. don't want to get on her We're just playing side. up characters. No, she doesn't have... Seriously, she has, she's a fucking saint no, for she has, dealing with you. I know. She has no, she has no personality flaws. <laughs> no. <laughs> She's quiet when she, she just, drinks. She, she's respectful. <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't know about that. She just yeah, doesn't. She gets it. <laughs> um, I'm going gonna, gonna to make a chart the the the, the levels of uh, Deb by how many vodka sodas. So it's like two vodka sodas. She's fun. Four vodka sodas. You're a fucking piece of shit. You're a coward <laughs> and a boy. <laughs> they should make thunder jackets for people. So when she starts drinking, they do you make them. Put a thunder jacket on. Mike's thunder brother's jacket one of the right biggest in. customers. <laughs> Because <laughs> he's like, hey, I wish. No, but uh, I, I want to, you know, I, I think also, like, we don't talk about, like, we're, it's so weird. I, I wrote, like, an essay because I was being a dumb shit and I needed attention. So I wrote, like, a fucking medium essay about it. But, like, we don't tell each other what's wrong with, like, our close friends. Like, they'll be, like, yeah. doing something that's completely self sabotaging. And we're like, ah, man, I, w- I don't really want to have, like, an awkward conversation. So you just let their entire life pass them you by. You just let the shitty behavior, yeah, yeah, continue. Yeah, and, like, they'll, you know, they won't get stuff. Like, I know, for instance, I know that I'm not as prolific as a comic as I need to be. Like, I can catch myself sometimes, like, where I'll be, like, um, telling a joke that's, like, two or three years old. And it's like, I, I, it's okay that I tell that joke, but that shouldn't be in my 10 minutes that I'm doing Yeah. now. That yeah. should be in my road act. And it's like, sometimes I'll, it's not even laziness. It's just like, it's almost like distraction. And also, you know, I'll date toxic people. I'll be self-sabotaging on the internet. Mm-hmm. There's things that I know that I do wrong, but I know that people don't tell me not to do them. And so I need to know <laughs> the difference between <laughs> what's, uh, you know. You want to set up a fun <clears throat> premise where they can tell you and it's okay. Yeah. Well, let's start with Matt. So, like, your your girlfriend's oh, kind of like, Matt's girlfriend's kind of like an alpha. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What do you also mean? Also a comic. What's her name? Uh, Shelby Taylor. I don't know her. She's great. Sweet, sweet girl. Kind of like, uh, she's kind of like an alpha. Uh-huh. But I think you got to be an alpha sometimes. I Every I'm once in a while. it'll so trying to grow <laughs> into it. But wait, it'll, surprise, saying, it'll surprise her. You, you think know? this affects him negatively that she's the alpha? No, I think she probably gets exhausted having to make decisions. Oh, oh yeah, you gotta, mm. you gotta have some. Although that would every be once in a while, just do, yeah, every once in a while, just grab her by the hair. That and be sounds like, so refreshing to have a have a lady make a decision. Because for I mean, maybe you don't have that problem with Deb, but I date all these waspy chicks, mm. and you're like, what do you want to do for dinner? And they're like, I don't know, I don't care. And then you pick a place, and they're like, oh, oh, I this hate that fucking. Yeah. I don't care. And then the worst, and I'm fucking, I'll be sexist right here because I don't think guys do this. The worst, I don't care. You go to the restaurant. You, they're clearly not enthused. They order something and then they don't eat it. Mm. And you're like, why the fuck did we do oh, this? Oh, no, Debbie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, she'll, she'll finish my dinner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Shelby will uh, tell she you, can't. though, that I'm, like, super, like, but, I mean, like, I'm different with her, so she's she'll tell you I'm a monster, mm-hmm. so maybe, okay, you know, maybe it's all just an act for everybody. Yeah. I'm still trying to get used to just existing in New York, you know? Yeah. Relatively new. All right, so we know that he's a I'm little too I'm trying to get Matt to have sex with Deb. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm, tr- I'm just I'm just floating it out there, you know? Yeah. What it- I mean, why, I mean, we're business partners. We might as well share women. Do you think that that's like a... It's like um, the third time he's brought this, this bit up. Are you attracted to cuckold? No, no, no. No. You'd lose your mind, right? Yeah, yeah. All right, take this part out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm leaving all the mistakes. No, what no, do you no, think's, I'm, I'm editing this episode. What personally. do you think's wrong with me, Mike? Why don't people like me? 
I don't know. I don't want to have this conversation. Come on. <laughs> That's the show. You brought Come it on, up. Pussy. No, it's not that people don't like you. It's but I I'm obviously somewhat unlikable. Yeah, a little bit. What do you think it is? You um you uh Do I have uh, an air of pretentiousness? Yeah, a little bit, but that's not your worst quality. Your worst quality is you're kind of a control freak. Yeah. Like even when we're moving, like like a simple task is like moving furniture, you're like, "No, do this, do this." But do doesn't this, that you- seem like like the the thing that I was always confused me about that is like you always hear these stories about these guys that like they took life and they they made fortune, you know. And yeah. it's like, "Well, what were they like passively like uh, hey, Mr. Um, Warner Brother, <laughs> if it uh, you know entertained you at all, I'd like to make well, a film. obviously, well, clearly they did something different than you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, obviously. <laughs> yeah, all my friends. Every if you look at my year of JFL, all of them almost or exclusively are doing wonderful. Oh, same you know, here. Yeah, yeah, making like two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year writing for coveted television programming. Money's not everything. Yeah, but it is to us. It, it it doesn't I don't even want like that's the funny thing is is like some people but are like money's not is, everything and it's like I don't want money. I want like normal, like, you know, fifty K. Yeah, fifty K would be great well, right now. The I thing used is, to if make you have, if you, if you have a writing job, there's a cap at how much money you can make. But if you have a podcast, the, the sky, sky is the limit. There's not a cap on writing jobs. <laughs> no? All right, fine. If you're an executive producer, you make like seventy five K an episode plus you get residuals, plus you get like Character fees, script fees. You make insane money. Well, we just gotta hmm. stay in the pocket. And if stay you're on an EP our, stay on, on our a path, sitcom, which is, which is podcasting, where we say fag. Yeah, <laughs> where we. Uh, yeah, that's the future. Can they yeah. lose you jobs in the future? What? Uh, like, let's say uh, Nick Mullen went out for something uh, like a part, no, and then they found people, out about Comptown, and they're like, "Oh, we don't want to be." People know him already. They they know what they're getting into. Okay. Yeah. Although I have talked to like a friend who wrote for um, last. Last week, what is it? Last uh, week tonight. Last week tonight, and he had like a really problematic joke in the past, and they had to like the show was like we got to scrub this joke from like your life because mm. it was a transphobic joke. Mm. But I think it depends on the program. I think okay. everybody knows when they're hiring Will and they're hiring him. Yeah, and also like Metzger is a guy that probably has like a pretty decent uh, history of pissing off people that ask people to get fired. You fucking losers. If you yeah. ask somebody to get fired because you don't like what they say, just don't fucking support their comedy. Don't yeah. ask them to fucking lose lose their livelihood, yeah. you fucking dickhead. Yeah, because they'll go be on the streets and be worse. Yeah, that's what I've, I actually have thought about this for a long time, about like when we kick people out of like the conversation. This guy in L.A., he got like kicked out of um, the comedy store for like being kind of a sexual harasser. Yeah. And he's like a he's an immigrant from like a small island nation, and he had a lot of he had a lot of like. But this is just how I thought. <laughs> this is how my parents met, man. But no, like he, he, he you know, basically, <laughs> yeah. he was like, I don't understand but why like, I'm being. Do you think he's gonna go back to his community and learn about like gender equality? No, you just sent him to be the number one predator in the fucking minor leagues. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyways, um. So that was literally good, minor leagues. Yeah, <laughs> the minority leagues. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Jesus, Christ. come on, uh-huh. we can say it. Mike's racist. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're welcome for leading the charge here. You know. Well, you didn't say what's wrong with me though. Okay. Or, yeah. What's uh, wrong because with you? you're you're like a micromanager. I'm a micromanager. You're a little bit of a control freak. I I completely agree with that. I would say that Mike. But you um, know what's? Oh, yeah. I know what's wrong with Mike. But, do you have yours to go? Because mine is, uh, yeah. Uh, he puts a lot of effort into dumb things, um, <laughs> like uh, Bob Racine and Ashley Racine. I don't know if that's dumb. First I of all, that's first of all. When, shut the fuck up, Matt. <laughs> when that's he great could, content. He could be working on uh, stuff to make him money. But that's yeah. But I that's think amazing that that's like, content. That, I I do think that because like uh, Brendan Walsh has his entire like uh, Trish Walsh and Sean and on he Twitter? does. Yeah, and he does these funny things That's where building it's, a brand. Yeah, it's forever, and it's like yeah, yeah. there's something like like um, Mike Burns who d- runs Dad Boner. Yeah, he used to do things where he would write fake action screenplays. Yeah, and he would post them on Craigslist. Uh huh. And nobody knew. Yeah, like genius level. I mean, yeah, it's a waste of time, but it's like. That type of stuff is like Wait, I think it's beautiful. Me- I think that's real art. Yeah. No, I, I it's not it's definitely funny, but like I'm trying to get a hold of him to plan our next guest, our next I host, am tough and, to work with. And, then I and see my phone's like, always off. I, I see would like say ten that. posts from Ashley Racine and I'm just like, What the fuck am yeah, I what yeah. are we doing right, right now? Fine. He does one thing that Mike does I'm that frustrates me is he, he walks away mid thing a lot. 
like he'll be cooking and then I'll, he'll be cooking and he'll be talking to me and then he'll just walk away into his bedroom to shut the door. And I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck was that? Like you were just talking about like a funny idea and then you just like, it occurred to you to masturbate. Like <laughs> <laughs> that's what happened. Like mid conversation, just like, oh yeah, yeah, that would be a funny idea. Just <laughs> silently walks away, door shuts. Alexa, turn on white noise. Why are you <laughs> masturbating to white noise? We gotta uh, play something. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. Um, you know, another right. thing about his un. All right. Yeah, so. go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna say you're circumcised. Yeah. Uh, well, oh, I mean, like, playing. but but if you're a look, if you're a comedian or something, and you're listening. I mean, it's it's really tough. The best thing you can do is just create <laughs> something and put it out there. Make a YouTube video. I mean, Frank was complaining to me today about someone who's on Wild and Out, and I'm like, you have to just get stuff. Terra Nova. There that pe- yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, I th- you know he could have had that job, um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> they needed a rapping grandpa. <laughs> yeah. He he's actually gonna, would be a really gonna wait outside your house and show. beat the shit out of me for that. They, no, that's fine. Oliver, shut they the fuck a up. Sixty year old. Uh, Did you hear that you turned on Alexa just now for white noise? Oh yeah, because it's on. That's funny. Yeah, yeah. Welcome, welcome hey Alexa. To the Stop. I use white noise to sleep. It's not just to jack off. <laughs> it's not just to jerk For off. jacking off, I'm like, Alexa, play classical piano. You know how there's different <laughs> colored noises? It's like, you know, there's like white noise and brown noise. Alexa, stop. Yeah. Yeah. It, what if you're like, hey, Alexa, play brown noise. And it was like two women arguing in a, bar, in a beauty salon. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're like, hey, Alexa, play white noise. And it was like your dad scolding you for not getting into Swarthmore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you call your brother an mf And then I said, why is soda two dollars? Like, that's <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> so relaxing. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, like that's same that, that's not right. Like that's too much money to sort of, I was like, fuck out of here. <laughs> well, I think that about does it, folks. Matt and I just want to say thank you for listening. Yeah, like, thanks, we guys. really appreciate it. And um, you know, you start a new podcast, you don't know if people are gonna be into it, so we want to say thanks. Yep. Please go out of your way to tell me if you um like think I'm like what's wrong with me, you know? Let me yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah, the listeners. I'm at I'm Andy Haynes on Twitter. Yeah, there's not that much. You're just a micromanager and you're a bit of a snob. I like being pretentious because yeah. it's like, honestly, you know what the worst part of this is, is that like I come from money. Yeah. So like I'm already living way below what I grew up in. Mm. Um, and then I, what my idea of New York that I wanted was that I wanted to like, I wanted to like hang out at like, um, you know, like uh, the, the salons of literary greats. Like that was my idea. I was going to come right. here and I was going to and be- everyone else from fucking Ohio. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah you them. know, I thought the idea was that I was going to like smoke cigarettes with um, George Plimpton while we talked <laughs> about like the greatest novels, mm-hmm. you know, and instead I just became, See, I, I moved here to be a doorman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but what I didn't realize is you have to like actually come from, you have to be smart already. You don't like get smart. People aren't like, and that's when I became smart. Like I'm just a dumb guy that looks like, a yeah, prince. you got to be connected already. Yeah. To that, to that Everything world. is connections. Yeah. Or you got to be like a real swindler and then like kill somebody accidentally. Right. <clears throat> well, listen folks, just some housekeeping stuff. Uh, we have a Patreon. Yep. If you want, we got, we got two episodes supporters. are going to start in March. They're going to be 30 minute episodes. I wish I had their names. Yeah. Uh, our first two Patreons are going to be Benjamin Johnston and Caleb McKenzie. Shout out to those two. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thank you. And then also, like, okay, th- I just got to plug this. There is, we do research for this show, so, like, if you want to Venmo us a little bit, my Venmo is Michael-Racine-2. <laughs> but really, the best thing you guys can do for us right now is just tell your friends about the show. Um, are you on iTunes? Yep. Yeah. So get the reviews. Yeah, yeah, rate, rate review. review, subscribe, and do all that stuff. Yeah, and, and uh, email the pod too, because uh, that was great. Like, please three email people us. emailed us. Yeah, and they were fucking we really nice. Three hundred. Yeah, three hundred. <laughs> I keep on trying to get Mike we, to do like different ethnicity m- mob families, and he's pretty against it because he just doesn't. <laughs> you know, he doesn't even consider those crime families. He's like, those are organizations. That's not like a family. Like, that's a family. more of a company. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I want to do like weird. I no, to- I'm totally down to do that. I just usually it's like the day before we don't have anything, so we just go by who's got a documentary on a, you know. I'm gonna do research on a couple episodes because I'm your roommate. I'm gonna demand that I do more episodes with you. 
Great. But one of them is there's the Kohler Cruccio family in Seattle. Yeah. So Great. I'm from Seattle. Very and then good. also I want to do something about some weird like Soviet fucking shit. Oh, that'd be sick. Yeah. You know what'd be fun to do is a Trump a Trump mob ties episode. Yeah. Because he's yeah, he's mobbed up as fuck. Anyways, I'll leave it at that. So Thank you guys. No, he is. And then there's Yeah. Wait, you're gonna <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> I'm kidding. Fucking I just felt piece like I was talking shit. too much. And See, this signing is, off. No, he's signing off a podcast that isn't even his. <laughs> no, but I felt like I was just talking too much. No, Thank you, you guys. <laughs> Thank you guys. Good night. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye.